Hi, welcome back to Shotoku Tech. On my previous video about Azure AD Connect export and import configuration settings, I got this interesting comment from a friend of the channel. I want to migrate AAD user to on-prem AD. Please guide me. That's an interesting question. I don't think I can just answer that in the context of a comment section, so I thought it would make a great video topic. Yeah, I do take a lot of your questions and uh, comments and make, make it into uh, subjects for videos, so leave a comment down below about Azure AD Connect. Let's talk about Azure AD Connect a little bit, the topologies. Single forest, single Azure AD Connect server, single Azure AD tenant. That's what they want you to do. You cannot have multiple sync servers to one AD to Azure AD tenant. You can have multiple forests with a single sync server, but you can't have multiple forests with multiple sync servers on a single Azure tenant. Same thing here. They're just going into a little more detail about user matching, etc. Here, something about GalSync. Yeah, that's interesting. Now, you can have a second Azure AD Connect server connected to the tenant, but it has to be in staging mode, meaning that it's not actually writing to Azure AD. And you could also have multiple instances of Azure AD Connect synchronizing to multiple instances of Azure AD. It's the only want to have one of the tenants writing back. So that's why you see that yellow arrow coming back with the caution marker on it. So you wouldn't want them writing back, just one writing back. Okay, GalSync using write back. Again, you can't have multiple servers against a tenant. And what they're saying there, single server, single tenant, and then each side of the GalSync actually uses uh, FIM or MIM on premise to synchronize. And you're not allowed to connect anything other than Azure AD Connect to the Azure AD Connect back end. So that's a, we don't, I don't see anything in this article that tells me how I'm going to be able to synchronize an Azure AD user account back to AD. So we're going to try something different and I think it's going to be fun. Yeah, this article sort of hints about, yeah, you could migrate groups, copy them, and update the MSDS consistency GUID. So that kind of gave me an idea of using PowerShell to copy the Azure AD user account down from Azure back to Active Directory. And then we just have to get the AD account to match up with the Azure AD account using Azure AD Connect. So that's what we're going to do. First, we need to install the Azure AD module. Install module, Azure AD. And right out of the gate, this wants the new version of NuGet. So I'm going to go ahead and install the new version of NuGet. And if you get error messages installing NuGet, check out my video. I'll have a link in the description below. Now we go ahead and install Azure AD. Okay, the script is going to be simple enough. You connect to Azure AD, you gather all the users. Of course, your filter here, I'm just using user principle name starts with cloud. So your biggest challenge, I think, is going to be filtering out which users you want to migrate from Azure AD to AD. And you're not migrating them from it. You're actually creating an AD instance that's going to be synchronized with the Azure AD account. So you can see I have two cloud test accounts here, cloud to AD test. Their UPN suffix is AACO online. So you want to make sure whatever UPN suffix they're using in the cloud is present in your local directory. And that's in the properties of Active Directory Domains and Trust. So now I'm connecting to Azure AD with PowerShell. Sign in with my username and password. There we go. And run the script. Oh, Okay. Yeah, and it says some variable is outside the range of the attribute. And I figured it out that it was country. And I don't know why, because user country is United States, and it wouldn't let me set that on the uh, Active Directory account. So I just took that out of the mix. Let's run this again. Oh. Okay, and I uh, password complexity or history requirements were not met. But the, if you stop and think about it, there isn't anything writing the password from Azure AD to AD. So we can't have the enabled equals true 
parameter set. I'm going to go ahead and just take that out of the equation. I wanted them enabled because they come through disabled, but they, in hindsight, they come through disabled because they don't have a password set. So now let's go ahead and run that again. We connect to AD. Oh, yeah, you see cloud to AD test one and cloud to AD test two both got copied down to Active Directory from Azure AD. I'm going to set the password. And once I've set the password, then I can go ahead and enable the account. There we go. Enable test one. Enable test two. So now what I want to do is synchronize with Azure AD. We'll force a Delta sync here. Start AD sync, sync cycle, policy type Delta. Okay, waiting for it to kick in. There we go. And if we look at the import, we see two updates. And it's my cloud to AD test one and two accounts. That's the AD syncing back to Azure AD. Here's the export. Let's wait for the numbers to come through. There we go. Two updates. And it is my two test accounts. Yeah, cloud to AD test one. Yeah, I didn't have anything lining up to country, employee hire date, employee type, or manager. So those got deleted from the cloud object. Password last set got modified. And those last four attributes didn't come across. We can work on that. Now, if I refresh this, you'll see on-premise sync enabled. So they matched up. But of course, you know, I changed the password in AD, so that's not cool. <laughs> the cloud user doesn't know their password right now. We'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so there's an object GUID and an MSDS consistency GUID. So the Active Directory object has both of those. That actually got writ back, written back from Azure AD. Azure AD, the more modern versions, use MSDS consistency GUID, mainly because it's portable. You can move the object between domains and keep the same MSDS consistency GUID, and that matches up with the immutable ID in the cloud. Yeah, you can see originally, you know, this is test two, didn't have an immutable ID until after we copied the object to AD and then synced it back. And here you see Azure AD wrote back to AD and added the MSDS consistency GUID. So these objects are matched up between the AD object and the Azure AD object kind of thinking that this could be a poor man's like quest migration manager if you needed to consolidate two domains that share the same Azure AD tenant. You just uh, stop syncing them on one side and then use the PowerShell to copy them over to AD in the other and then match them up again. They'll be right back in their mailbox and their SharePoint and their Teams. None of that will change. You really want to make sure you've enabled self-service password reset, SSPR, with Azure AD. I think you need a P1 license for Azure to enable that. And then users have to set up uh, verification methods like phone or authentication app, etc. But then they could go change their password after you've migrated them. You could include that as part of the migration process. So I've added to my script, we're going to create a secure string password here. And then we are going to set the password on the account to just some arbitrary value. And we're going to go ahead and enable the account. And like I say, if you've set up password reset, then the cloud users could go to the Azure portal and reset their password. Uh, so I've added a third test user. And you see they're not in sync yet. Let's see if our system's going to work here. Okay, dropping that script. Boom. And cloud test three came through. It's enabled. It has a password set on AD, but we don't want to share passwords with users. Let them just go to the password reset portal and update there. Let's go ahead and start synchronization. 
somehow I managed to run this uh, command at exactly the same time that Azure AD Connect decided to start up. So that's why you got that big nasty error. It already had something in process. So this shows up as an ad this time. And there's your test three account. Okay, export to Azure's in progress and it's adding. And it's interesting. Sometimes they show as an update. Sometimes they show as an ad. But what I don't see is I don't see the export of the MSDS consistency grid back to Active Directory from Azure. Let's go ahead and refresh here. And we can see test three is now on premises sync enabled. So we did match. I was just worried because no MSDS consistency grid was written back. We're just going to go ahead and run another sync. Okay, it's still showing an ad. Let's click on the export here. There's an update. And the export back to Active Directory, there's an update. And we'll see here this time the MSDS consistency grid is written back from Azure AD to Active Directory. So now that user could go to the password reset portal and reset their password and they'd be up and running. All right. Yeah, like I say, if you have a P1 or better license in Azure AD, make sure you set up self-service password reset. It's just a matter of selecting which authentication mechanisms the users will use. Anyway, like I say, it sounds like an interesting possibility for uh, directory consolidation pivoting on Azure Active Directory. Leave a comment down below. Give this video a like. And before you go watch more of my Azure AD Connect videos, please click on subscribe. Thank you very much.